statistics and excel calories data statistics sample example got data let's get stuck into it with statistics and excel well actually we're using one note here but we won't be talking about excel too you're not required to but if you have access to OneNote icon left hand side OneNote presentation 1360 calories data statistics sample example first a word from our sponsor yeah uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like this cpa thinking cap for example cpa thinking cap you see what we did with like with the letters and this cpa thinking cap is not just for cpas either anyone can and should have at least one possibly multiple cpa thinking caps why because based on our scientific survey of five people all of whom directly profit from the sale of these cpa thinking caps wearing this cpa thinking cap without a doubt according to the survey increases accounting productivity tenfold yeah at least yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster it's kind of like how in like the matrix when neo learns kung fu or at least that's what the scientific survey's saying so get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash if you would like a commercial free experience consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com full tab we're also uploading transcripts to OneNote so you can use the immersive reader tool change the language if you so choose either read or listen to the transcripts in multiple different languages using the timestamps to tie in to the video presentation OneNote desktop version here, data on the left-hand side related to counting calories. We have the date on the left, the calorie count on the right. So for example, this first one, 3-12-2016, calorie count 2,990. 3-12-16, calorie count 1777, and then 3-13-16, calorie count 2480. Now we're gonna treat this data on the left-hand side as though it's the entire population of data so that we can run a few statistical analysis on it. And then imagine that we're gonna take samples from this data set so that we can then run statistical tests on the sample to see if that information is something that can tell us about the entire population. So similar type of strategy here that we have done when we looked at the heights of individual, but we're gonna use a little bit different methods when we get to uh, the sampling. And our goal is to think about the statistics involved as well as how we might use tools such as Excel to help us practice with these concepts. Also just realize that if you want to look up some of these data sets, uh, kaggle.com k-a-g-g-l-e.com might be a place to look let's start off by taking the information from the entire data set so this is the population data set we can calculate the average or mean which is going to be taking the entire uh, sum of the number adding up all of the numbers and then dividing by the count one two three four and so on or we can use the average function which is average and then we just sum up the data or average in this uh, set of data. And that gives us the 2189. We might also take the median, which is picking the one in the middle. So if we listed this from top to bottom, lowest to highest or highest to lowest, and then pick the one in the middle, that would be the median. Just like Rockies, the boxers coach told him to when he sees three of them out there hit the one in the middle hit the one in the middle the max is the highest one so if we were to sort the column over here and pick the the highest amount that's the maximum we don't even have to sort them though because we have the formula of equals max to pick the max and then the min is the lowest one so we could sort by the lowest one to see the min or I can simply use my min formula. So we had zero calories. That was, we were locked in a closet one day or something. I don't know. That's 
Not sure that's exactly healthy. We're fasting. It's just one day. Not a big deal. All right. So then if we were to take this data and then put it into a histogram, so we just select this entire data set, make a histogram. Here's from the categories of 0 to 370, from 370 to 740, and so on. And, the, and it looks like kind of like the middle or biggest area where most of the results are falling in is between 1,850 uh, and 2,220. Now, calories is another one of those areas where you would kind of expect because we, we tend to stay at a similar weight, uh, you know, a similar range between a few pounds so that you would expect that our calories would also be within a pretty reasonable range. So this is another one of those areas where you would expect most days your calorie counts are pretty much in a range and then it would look kind of bell-shaped you would think uh that would be higher or lower on on certain days that's kind of so we don't have as extensive a data set here as we had with the heights and therefore we don't have as much detail that you might expect if we had a whole whole lot of data but we're going to assume this is basically our in, entire population so then we're going to think about how we can create a sample of that population. So if I'm going to create a sample, what I want to do is take these numbers and, and in essence, shuffle them up. I want to shuffle up those numbers. So once again, we're going to use the technique of using the random number generator. So the random number generator is this one, just equals random. And if you just put a random number, it's going to use a decimal. I've then added the decimal. So it's a pretty long decimal. So all of these randomly generated numbers should be unique. And therefore, if we sort them, they will be uh, sorted, you know, in a, in a, in a, they'll shuffle the sorting. So if we add the calories, so now I've added all of the calories and these random number generator to it so that when I sort them, it will give me a random shuffle. And then if I just pick the first 10, for example, I will have picked kind of a random sample of the entire population. That's going to be the idea. Now, I would like to do this multiple different times because I want to mirror the concept of running multiple tests, meaning taking a random sample multiple times. So I'm going to try to do it like 75 times. So what I want to do is make, I'm going to make one, two, three, four, five of these random generator tools, meaning I have all of the data in the entire population and then a random generation column next to it. And then I can sort each of these and that sorting will shuffle them each time. So I'm going to shuffle each of these each time, which gives me a whole set of the entire population randomly shuffled. And so if I want to then make 75 samples of however many, uh, like 100, 100, 75 times, I can reshuffle these every five times. So that's one way I could do it, right? So I could then go over here and say that that we're going to then uh, copy and paste the, the same. Well, let's do it this way first, but I can make it even a little bit easier. I can say that these are my samples now. So this is just going to say equals and I'm pointing then to this cell. So that nine, th so this whole column is simply pointing to, and this is 20, that just goes down to 20. So I'm just pointing to this cell, this cell, this cell, this cell. This is a formula referencing the table. And I just chose 20 out of however long the table goes. So now I've got a count of 20 that were randomly selected out of the entire population and I have 20 different samples of, I mean, I'm sorry, five different samples that are 20 long. Now, what I want to have is uh, 75 samples. So what I could do to, to make this whole table of, of 75 of them is that I can do five at a time, right? I can copy this, this table. I can paste it here. When I paste it here, I'm going to paste it just the values, not the formula just the values, and then I'll have five uh, randomly generated samples of 20 in the sample. And then I can do it again, right? I can reshuffle these, shuffle, 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 which reshuffles this whole set. And then I can simply copy the, the, these again, and that, that would be another five 
going out to 10, right? And then I can do it again. It's kind of tedious, but I can. This is a this is a way that you can start to play with larger kind of sets of tests in Excel to see the impact on things like what the histogram is going to look like and whatnot. As you increase the sample size, you can play with these different random num number generating techniques that can help you get a concept of, of what's going on. So I shuffle them all again, and then I copy these again, and then I paste it over here for the next, for the next five. And I do that at five at a time until I get to what I wanted, which I think was 75, 75 uh, samples, all of which randomly selected, uh, randomly selected 20, 20 items. So now we can, so now we can imagine our test. So, so now we can imagine our test and say, well, these are the results. Uh, if I, if I take the average uh, of the sample, I'm going to get my results down here. So, so in this case, uh, we had our these each of these columns. The data in the column represents uh, the calorie count for one for one sample. So, and then if I take all of those and I take the average of them per column, here are the averages for these 75 samples that we took of 20. Then I might want to put this in a vertical format. So I might take all of these that I did 75 times, put them vertically, which we can do in Excel fairly quickly. So now I've put them in a vertical format and then I've compared it to what the actual data was, which was 2189. Uh, so remember the actual data over here, when we did this on the full data set, we're imagining this is the entire population. It was at the 2189. And then we took 75 example, 75 samples of 20 each to see how close that data mirrors what's in the actual total, right? So now I've got the averages for each of those 75 and I can compare that to the actual middle number. And you can see some of them are higher, some of them are lower. So that's kind of what we would expect. If I take an average of the averages, I come out to the 2210, which is pretty close to the 2189. And then of course we can, we can build uh, our histograms. So you can start to play with the pictorial representations. Now this one is actually a histogram of the sample of data. So in, in this case, we took a histogram of this sample 75, where we took 20, 20 of them. So this is plotting out those 75 calorie counts in the buckets of from 538 to 1155 and so on and so forth. The middle point is here at 1773 to 2390. We had eight that landed in here. And again, we know the actual for the entire population is at the 2189. So that's for just one sample. And this one is just for one sample. This is 74. So in this case, we took sample 74, all of these numbers for 20, 20 tests. And it looks like this. Obviously, they're not going to look exactly the same because these are two different sets of 20, which were randomly selected from the entire population. And then we took another one. This is this is number 73. So if we take each one of these samples that were randomly selected, we get different, you know, histograms. And if you take larger samples, then then you'll get, you know, different shapes of the histogram rather than taking 20, you can take as many as you want, 100, 5,000, you can, you know, you can test it out in Excel and play with larger samples and see what the adjustments to these histograms would be. And then this one is taking a histogram of the averages. So in this case, rem remember that this column is the average of all of the 75 samples of 20 that we took. And so if we take a histogram of the averages, then here's what that looks like. So, so here's from 18979 to 2039. And again, we would expect the middle point here to be at the 2189 because the, that's the actual amount, right? And so you see it's starting to look, you know, something more like that, right? 
and then it's and then it's tapering off and we've got it kind of skewed to the right for this histogram and we can see that when i take the average again of all the averages you know that middle point is at two two one zero so this is just another uh tool we do this in excel as well if you want to see how to do this in excel but you can start to play with these data sets and use your pictorial representations and get to fairly large data sets so you can get an, an idea of what happens when you're using small numbers versus larger numbers and then you can and then you can actually build your histograms and charts and whatnot based on the results and you're going to get a better intuitive feel of what is actually happening in future presentations, of course, we, we want, we'll get into more uh, specifics on how we can kind of describe some of these things uh, mathematically, but it's, it's quite useful to, to play with this stuff in, in Excel, which allows you to do you know, fairly large amounts of data to see what the impacts would be when you make, say, histograms based on those results. It also is great practice for using Excel.